Well, I got my first milk bottle out of here. Um, had a dump I've gone to before. And it's an Allendale and a wee bit. So this is a common one. So I found them here before, always in pints. So there's my first keeper. I'm gonna go keep on going. Here's one of those wine bottles that are embossed. I don't know if I'll keep it, but they're really common in these type dumps. I want to keep on going now. Well, as you can see, I'm coming up with the same stuff that I usually do. Here's the Paul Jones. This has a label on it. You can see Paul Jones on that label. So I'm down roughly about five feet, four and a half. Almost four and a half. Uh, see some other stuff down here. It's this right here. There's one with another label on it. I don't know what is on there. But uh, that has a label that I, I cannot read. Textured. Nothing really to write home about. Uh... That looked like it was a big carboy or something. So, uh, let me get down a little further. Can't be much more. I mean, I'm past the ground level around here, so I don't know how deep they dug this dump. But uh, I'll go further, a little further, and I'll start digging in. You see, there's jars and stuff in here. Okay, let's keep going. Well... I've got a soda coming out. I got down to about five feet. I won't go any further. It's all the same stuff. All the same age, it looks like. So, but let's see what the soda is. It might not be in one piece. A lot of stuff is in here. Although, it don't look too bad so far. I think we got one. And we do. And it is. It's one of these. They don't come out too well, these Jordans, but hey, I've got one. So let me cover it up and uh, put it on the board. I hope that thing stays. The last one I dug up here didn't, so, but there's still hope I might come across a Coke or something. Okay, here we go. Now, here's an odd whiskey. If you can see, there's a guy playing a cello. What in the hell? I've never seen this one. It's a federal law. I'm going to keep it because it's so, so strange. <laughs> a guy playing the cello. Okay. A little bit of music history here. Well, here's a label you can read. Old Duke. I guess that's Duke. Yeah. Old Duck. Huh. It's, uh, one of these, uh, the dude with the wine company. So that's old duck, huh? Maybe it's cold duck. I think it's cold duck. Cold duck. Remember that? I do. Long time ago. There you got it. Well, sometimes you see this uh, in a trash dump. But why somebody would do it, I do not know. But there he has. Sella Lit. Lawton. She was born in 1876 and died in 1946. At rest. Well, I guess she is somewhere. I hope she's not at rest here because you can see we're in a dump. <laughs> anyway, yep. Just show you. There's some weird stuff in, in town dumps. There's a coke sticking out of the ground. Let's see if this thing... Mm. Well, there it is. Oh, it's a local one. Let's see what the date on this is. I can't see it. But let's see. 42. See, right there is a 19... 
1942. So, well, for 1942 Coke, that's not bad. Uh, I'm going to dig around here and see what else I can find. Put my shovel in the ground. I touched this thing, and I realized it's one of those little baby doll. It has a dog on it. I don't know if you can see that. But baby feeder, doll feeder. That's cool. I'll keep that. All right, uh, one step up. Well, I'm back from my dig that I went on yesterday uh, to the familiar dump that I had discovered years a year now. And uh, because the dump is late, um, there are some older stuff mixed in with it. And I'm not quite sure how this dump is structured. Um, I don't believe it's it's a complete city dump. I think it's just a neighborhood dump uh, at, between two small towns. So, you know, maybe 50 families at the most probably dump there. Maybe a, maybe 85. I'm not sure. It's a good size dump, but the variety of stuff is is limited. So. I find seem to find the same things but anyway as you can see I found a, the same old same old uh, this is the best nest bits now I didn't find that at that dump I found it somewhere else but this is the best nest bits I have found in a long time and uh, this um, is a Los Angeles California one so this is uh, pretty much true to its uh, company name at California uh, soda um, the Cokes this one here I picked up in a small town walking around in it and the only reason I picked it up it's a um, office patent so it's not old it's it looks like it's a 19 let's say 1960 so it's a 1960 coke but it's from a town that I'm familiar with and it's Inverness, Florida. Now, I lived in uh, Orange, uh, what is it, Citrus County, where that's, this is the county seat of Citrus County. And it's a small town. <laughs> Maybe a, a thousand people back in uh, that time period, but it's pretty big now. So, uh, it's grown pretty extensively since that time. So, I've just picked it up for nostalgic reasons. And I lived down there and I never found one. <laughs> The other one here is a local one, and it is also, it's a 1942, which sort of dates the dump. So, this is a local Allendale. That's a town not too far from where I'm digging. Um, this was a real interesting, very interesting bottle. I've looked it up, and I cannot find much info. It's not uncommon. I think it's been, it's, they have it on eBay for some ridiculous price of, $29 or something really to be honest with you this is not that I don't think it's that valuable um, that's a uh, um, Keystone that's a probably a um, Pittsburgh bottling company and I don't know it's, it looks like a probably a 41 is when this bottle was probably produced and it is interesting though, because I've never seen that embossing. Um, pretty cool. It has music notes all over it. So I guess you were hearing music once you got finished with that one. Um, but here is a real interesting bottle. Now I found these before, and I really didn't give it much notice because I don't collect wine bottles really. Um, but this is a Cal Car Cal Winery from Greensboro. Now. This is the original bottle for the Kata, Katanaga Industry Wine Company. Katanaga is really big today. It's still going on. Um, but it started here at Karkal with uh, a man who, after right after the uh, Prohibition, he got into the uh, the wine business now he started in in, in Greensboro and um, 
Max Sands was his name, and he started in 1935 making this bottle. So this bottle comes within that period, 1935. Now his son was so enthusiastic about the business that he wanted a winery of his own, and he finally was able to purchase, or his father helped him purchase a place in um, Kananaga, New York. And he started his own Kananaga Industries, making wine, buying bulk wine, and bottling it. Um, and by 1945, Carcow was closed. Uh, they closed it down, and um, Marvin went on. Now, what he did was he incorporated um, his company, and um, he began expanding by purchasing other wine companies or, or companies that produce wine. And it grew and grew and grew. His first big hit uh, was Wild Irish Rose. I think everybody's heard that song, and I'm sure old-timers know that wine. I've heard of it myself, like uh, Cold Duck, and these were standard cheap wines of the time period. Uh, and in 1946, I think, he started um, Wild Irish Rose, and it became mega. It it blew everybody out of the water. He became super, super successful with that and in turn decided he was going to uh, expand and he did and he didn't stop. He uh, bought winery after winery, started brand after brand. Uh, if you know anything, he bought the Monarch um, branch of the wine industry and with that he purchased... Uh, Manischewitz, uh, what else did he buy? Um, if I name a wine, uh, Carlo Rossi, any of these, today they are a uh, subsidiary of Kananaga Corporation. He owns all the wine, big major wineries uh, in the country. So, this guy is still in business. He died back in, what was that, 80? He was 75 or something. 70, he was 75 when he died. A Marvin, uh, the son, who, who is really the progenitor of this. And uh, yeah, this little uh, wine bottle was the seed to all the wine that's being consumed pretty much under a commercial label today this this is the guy so I was interested that was interesting to learn about that I I really know and I left I left about half a dozen of these bottles over there uh, I might when I go back I might pick a few more up because I think this is significant for the for what it is you know and, um, interesting wine bottle and, and I don't really I'm not a you know most wine the only I collect her hawk wine, which is a German, beautiful uh, hues, reds, and uh, blues, uh, dark teal blue. Hawk wine are top on my list, but commercial wine, eh, not so much. And everything you've seen before, this was interesting. Again, a little, a little pup dog is on there, if you can see. And this is um, Dolly. Dolly. Uh, products they made those for dolls uh this uh bourgeois or i think what is this is it yeah, bonjour i don't know i don't yeah bonjour bourgeois whatever you want to say this little tiny bottle is very cool i like that one found another one a little interesting uh perfume this one had a label on it and it still does and it's a it was some kind of face cream or something like that i don't know exactly but i like the bottle because it has a very deco look to it and all the rest are pretty much the same this and i got another one of these um the dump i was digging in is um pretty rough uh, because it has a small window of time it's probably from the very late 30s to about, I'd say, close to 1960. 
um, anything under the ground is of late 30s to uh, 40s and everything closer to the edge of the dump and the surface is all 50s and 60s which you know I'm just not interested in that stuff it just doesn't appeal to me um, war grade blue um, during the uh, war 1940s we're talking about um, World War II uh, cobalt was at a premium so the companies that produce blue bottles used minimum and they also used another entity that wasn't cobalt and it produced a blue but more of a corn flower um, same thing here's a, a very light war grade um, milk of magnesia you'll know these are very dark blue more more along the lines of uh, of this you see there's a difference there anyway I'm gonna go out and dig hope to find something different uh, I'm gonna go some some different places it's just been a difficult way to drive I have to drive close to an hour to get to these places now because everything close to me is gone or just doesn't produce anything and uh, so I drive quite a while I do a lot of study to make sure that I'm not hitting dead ends but when I hit these small towns catch catch can you know you don't know what you're gonna find in the woods so that's my next venture uh, hope to talk to you soon and uh, have a great day bye